Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. My guest is Stephanie Sayer, and she is the creator of Muse Boards, and we've been talking with her about how you put these together. And uh, stay tuned, because she has a, an interesting offer for you at the very end, which we'll tell you about. But um, it was a, it's just amazing, uh, the ideas people come up with, and you never think that something like this would exist. So um, we've talked about the muse board process. And we've talked about the difference between a vision board and a muse board. But if someone already has a way to capture their feelings and their thoughts, such as journaling that we've talked about, how can a muse board enhance what they already do? Hmm. Yes. How it enhances it is that it is a, you get a physical board that we create together and it complements the writing that you might do in a journal or, um, uh, I mean, I even write on my computer and I find that the, the, the physical reminder is where the, um, where the power is. I have a, a many clients who use these boards they, they actually have them behind them while they're doing a podcast. One woman leads um, people in a, a, a workshop and she brings it in and sets it up even on an, uh, sort of an altar. But it doesn't, she doesn't ever talk about it. It's there for her as the, this PowerPoint um, uh, or an anchor for her to, to, when she is leading a group of people, she looks at it and she gets she gets reconnected with her purpose. Well, you know, um, I, I have a question for you, and um, I, I don't know if the majority of your clients are female, are, are women, uh, but I would be interested to know uh, the difference of what a news board might look like if it was done by a man. Do you have male clients? I mean, is, do you see as a designer and artist uh, a difference between a male muse board and a female muse board? Well, I think that that is so fun because I do have ma male clients. I have done boards now for, I think, three or four men. And the, um, the difference is amazing in, in some ways the, um, that we all have desires and we all have goals, but the, the masculine elements that are brought in are, are really fun. And, and, you know, we are all combined men and we have masculine sides and we have feminine sides, all of us, whether we're male or female or gender fluid or however you describe yourself, <clears throat> there are, um, and, and, and some people bring, even women bring in this more masculine energy to their boards than, um, a fem female or feminine side. So I, it's an interesting thing because there's a couple of men that have done muse boards that have much, some very interesting feminine qualities to their boards. So I'm not sure if there's a, a real definitive answer to that question. And, and yes, I have done it for board. Would I be able to tell whether it's done by a man or a woman? Uh, I don't know. That'd be, I'd be curious. I don't think so. You know, because I, I know that I have a lot of masculine energy. I do know that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always tried, well, in the last 10 years, my son has, has been trying to develop the spiritual side of me. <laughs> so um, I've been really trying to cultivate my feminine energy. And um, I know there's a big difference there. And I know how men approach business. I know how women approach business. I know 
um, the, the negotiating tactics that men use, the negotiating tactics women use, and they're totally different. So uh, it would be very interesting for me to see the difference between a male and a female muse board. I think that would be, be very interesting. But once you create them, how long do they last? I mean, do you change them? Uh, if so, how often? Uh, do you keep old ones along with the new ones? Tell us a little bit about the history. Yeah, um, I have done muse boards now, specifically muse boards, for five years. And some of my clients who've done them from the beginning five years ago, they have the same ones and they still use them every single day. They look at them, they meditate next to them, they use them in their work, um, and they aren't ready to change them. Uh, in fact, one of my clients, she says that uh, it really stretches her. It, she has changed so much in five years. Some of these images, even though she selected them, she told me, she said, I don't know if I would have put some of those images, even though I chose them, I don't think they would have been on my final board if I had been putting that together. So her her, there was a part of her who knew where she was going, right? Her soul. And right. she selected it, but if she had been doing it, she wouldn't have been able to step into that role. And so five years in, she's still growing into that, those images that she selected. And then I have other people who have done, um, a couple different boards over the years. I have one woman who's done three different boards and for different reasons. So um, they tend to last. It's not something you do every year unless you have a different goal that you want to visualize. Um, I've done three or four of them for myself. I, and it's a little different for me because I don't get to have another person do it. I, um, I have to sort of separate myself. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, I know that you, you talk about um, news boards making a difference for people. Uh, do they make a difference for organizations? And would an org and who? I mean, have an org has an organization ever uh, employed you to create a news board for them? <clears throat> yes, they have. I did a news board last year for um, a company who ran a retreat and it was a three day event. And um, what we had was um, I was, I was invited to attend and I, I there were about 150 people in the uh, uh, retreat and they, some of them were actually on a live stream. So they weren't in, in the room, they were all over the world. And, um, I had 43 people contribute to the muse board that we created. And, um, it was amazing. The synchronicity that, that happened, the, um, the unification of the, uh, the, of the event and what they were going to take forward from the event. It was, a, it was really eye opening for everyone who participated and including me, cause I had never done one for that big of a group before. And, uh, it was fun. So I, I really, um, think there's a, a lot of ways to use these, um, team building. You could, could, uh, get a group of a small group of people and they could visualize their, their um, team and where they're going in their next project together, uh, really getting to see what other people envision and, and what they envision. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to use these. Amazing. You know, it's, it's just, it's interesting that people, you know, you don't even think about something like this. Of course you would because you're creative. I'm, I'm so non-creative. I mean, I get an idea and then I go for the idea, but I don't consider myself necessarily a creative person because I know, um, I, you know, I've had friends who are, who are artists and very creative and, and I mean, they would come up with things at a drop of a hat that I never even thought of. So it's, it's just really interesting. What are some of, what are some of the unusual ways that people have used these muse boards? <laughs> well, 
before I answer that question, I just have to uh, beg to differ with you, Gail, because I think we are all creative, that um, we aren't all necessarily art artists, but you are creative in different ways. So, and you said it, you come up with ideas and you go for it. So there you go. You are creative. Yeah. My problem uh, is I go too fast. You know, what? I don't, uh, I, I don't think I don't, I just go for it. You know, yeah, and, well, uh, it's good too. It's, you know, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> that's my personality. It's, it's uh, funny. I was at an event this weekend and uh, somebody was asking a question and, uh, you know, I do media training for radio and TV. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. And so, um, uh, and they were talking, they had a guest speaker, and the guest speaker was talking about uh, how publicity had launched her career. I mean, she's on one of these uh, home network real estate shows, and she has a reality show and so forth. And she was saying, you know, how this, that, and the other. And so people got to the mic and then said, well, how do you get media training? How do you prepare? So I said, well, this is my chance. So I went up and I said, I do media training. And it was so funny. From that point on, I wasn't known as the SOB, the spunky old broad. I was known as the media lady. Where is the media lady? So, um, you know, I just got out of my chair and said what I had to say. I really didn't think too much about it. So it's, it's, that's kind of my, my mode of operandi, operandi. You know, I just, I, I see something I want and I go for it. So, um, but I don't consider that creative. I just consider that I don't know what, but <laughs> but the thing is, um, I think that if more and more uh, people took advantage, like organizations, and used it as a team building exercise or used it as a a meditation type of thing, you know, if things get too harried, uh, some of the more entrepreneurial firms, they allow people to go and meditate if that's what they need to do. And if you were able to have something like this in your, especially if you have a cubicle, you know, you don't have a real gorgeous office, you have a cubicle. Um, I would think that something like this would be very uh, stress reducing and very calming for people who might be in the middle of a real heated discussion with someone on the phone or even uh, uh, online. So I think it's a tremendous way of looking at things and, and doing something that's a totally different uh, uh, type of thing. So yeah, and I the reaction. I, yeah, go ahead. I was just, I was just gonna say, I, I, I think that that you know, so many times, my ex, well, from this um, event or retreat that we did the Muse Board for last year, uh, so many times you go to an event or you go to a retreat, and you're there for three days, and you immerse yourself with the the amazing people that are there, and you get the workbook, and you write down things and you go, God, I'm going to take this home and I'm going to remember this. Right. And what happens so many you times, you never look at that workbook again. Again, <laughs> right? those and, notes and, again. <laughs> yeah. And three months, six months, three years later, you run across it and you go, Oh my gosh, I, you know, and you, you're right back there and you go, God, I remember that I was going to remember this. And so the, um, the, the muse board has, worked for people who have been at this event to remind them, oh yeah, that's what I got from there. And that's what I'm going to, I'm still moving forward with this. So how could that work with an organization could be that you've got a team, your team, you get to see that, you, you know, maybe you have a little friction with another person on your team, but with the, the vision that they have and you have, you know, so you've got these different people with, and you get to see their vision as well as yours uh, represented on the muse board. There's a more, there's more cohesion there with that group instantly, because you can be, you could have it in your cubicle. Everyone could have their own. And then they look at it and go, Oh yeah. Even though I have this issue with Gail, um, look at, this is where her vision is for us moving forward with this project. I'm yeah, I mean, I can really see someone doing um, their own news board, you know, their own news board, uh, which they can either keep in the cubicle or keep at home or wherever, but then also the team doing a team one, 
Yeah. And so there would be more than one board available to a person. But the team board, uh, if they could put it up somewhere where everybody could see it and then have certain things that everybody worked on on a daily basis, what a difference that would make, I would think, you know. So, uh, that, yeah. So, so what is, what are people's reactions? To you, Stephanie, when you far, first start talking about these muse boards, do they look at you like you're crazy? Uh, do they look at you like I never heard of this? Or uh, what are they? What is the first impression? Well, they're uh, mostly. Uh, they don't usually see me without a muse board. So um, my the first impression is always they they lean in and they say, "Wow, what is that?" Um, I, I, the event where I met you, I did have one person come up and say, Oh, I've heard of these. It's like, yes. Yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> usually yeah, but you don't carry a muse board around with you, do you? No, no. Well, no, not really. But I do have my business cards are little pieces of muse boards and those people like that. They really, they engages them. Um, but um, usually when we start talking and I start telling them about this, if I don't have one, they are really, really interested because I think so many times I, we, we forget, we tend to forget. And if there's another way that helps us remember, that's fairly easy. Um, it really makes a difference and they're, they're interested. And in answer to your question from a few minutes ago, um, what people use these for. So not only in teams and organizations or visualizing, uh, an organization's mission statement, um, and retreat, um, solidifying in a, a feeling of a retreat, people have used these for growing their businesses. Um, they've used them um, for the intention of having a baby, finding new love in their life after a 33 oh, wow. year, yeah, 33 years, this woman was married and broke, it broke up. And then a couple years after she said, I'm ready. And I, I need a muse board to help me find new love. Um, people have done it for writing their books, um, and writing a play. They've done it for moving, finding a new house. So it, um, f I have had a client who did it for as a remembrance of an anniversary or a wedding, uh, a wedding, a, you know, like bridesmaids getting together and doing this. So there's so many variables and uses for this. That's really, really interesting. Wow. Now, I know that you have uh, some kind of uh, special offer that you are going to give our listeners about um, something with the Muse Board. So why don't you tell us what that is all about? Yes, I would. Since you've uh, hung in there with us and uh, listen to this um, interview, I would love to offer your listeners um, a free call with me to find out more. And then if they do purchase a Muse board, they get 10% off. And they can and just... What, what oh, will you I, talk about on that free call? Oh, I on their free call, it's a half hour call. And usually we talk about um, what's happening in their life, um, that they would love to have a visual reminder around, you know, a specific goal or desire that they want to create for themselves. So that, uh -huh. um, yeah, that's usually what and then the I interrupt you. You were going to say if they purchase a muse board, they will. What? Oh, <laughs> they, if they purchase a muse board, I'm offering them 10% off. And all they need to do is mention that they heard it on your show. Fantastic. That's great. Okay. So um, that's wonderful. Well, now I, um, I would say if people went to your website, let's give them some information about you. First of all, um, where can they find you? Well, they can find me online at um, stephaniesteyer.com. And do you need me and to that spell? Is uh, yeah, spell that. <laughs> okay. It is <clears throat> Stephanie, S T 
E Y. No, Stephanie. <laughs> I, my name is so, it starts the same. So S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-S-T-E-Y-E-R dot com. So it's stephaniestayer.com, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-S-T-E-Y-E-R dot com. Okay. Yes. And any other way you'd want them to get in touch with you? Um, that's the easiest. Through there, they have a link. Uh, through the website, there's a link to book a call directly to my calendar. Um, I mean, I'm there, I'm happy to receive email also, which is um, Stephanie S T E P H A N I E at stephaniesteyer dot com. So fantastic! Well, that sounds great. Um, I think that um, I think you know you you have not met Stephanie in person, which I did. And she's just a very engaging woman and is so passionate about this that, I mean, I think you can tell it from what she's been saying. If you have really struggled with, you know, putting down who you are or who you want to be in the future, what your dreams and passions are, what you are really uh, wanting in your desires and your goals, Stephanie is someone you should be in touch with because these muse boards are fascinating. I know that many of you know vision boards and you kind of just face things up there, but the muse boards are very pretty and attractive in the way that they're done. And I think that you would be really, really happy with the end result of what you, what you see. So if you go to her website, and I think you have some samples on your website, right? Yes, I do. I have a, a portfolio of all different kinds that I've done. Okay, so that you'll get an idea of what she's talking about. And I think it would be, I just think it would be fascinating. I think it would just be fascinating. So we, we have about, um, oh, I don't know, three minutes, two, three minutes left. Um, is there something we haven't talked about, Stephanie, that you would like to tell our listeners? Yeah, um, there is one other thing that there's another way to use these muse boards. And that is in, um, say you're working towards rebranding your business or, or yourself. And, um, you, my experience with working with people, uh, so many times I talk to people and they, they have struggle with getting the right identity for themselves, whether a uh, visual identity, whether that's the logo or their website. So many times, if you start with a muse board, you can show that to your web developer or your designer, and they get to see who you are through that. So there's another. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a very good idea. Yeah. Um, of course, you have to have somebody, hopefully, who they are because they're a designer to begin with, but hopefully these are people who can really kind of read your mind and read your your branding that you want from from the things that you have there. So I think that's a great idea, too. Yeah. I've never really thought about it as a rebranding thing, but it's a great way to, to look at things and, and figure out how you want something to be that right. isn't that isn't you, you know, that you haven't really thought about before. And, uh, I think that's a great idea. So when we talk about these, um, these boards, um, you just have to go to her website to see them. That's, that's the thing. I mean, you just can't imagine them if you don't go to her website. And so that's what I suggest you all do. Go stephaniestayer.com, see what it's all about. And, uh, gosh, this has been absolutely Fascinating. I think that uh, our listeners are, uh, we're in for a real treat. And this is something, you know, we talk about this is for SOB Radio, it's for our women 50 plus. This is just fabulous for you guys because you, you, are in a stage of your life where you're imagining all the things that you've never done that you want to do, and this is an ideal place to to have a, a, a muse board. I mean, there isn't a better place at all to have one. So um, anyway, uh, I want to thank you for being with us today, and I, I hope that you get some response from this, Stephanie, because I think it's very worthwhile for uh, people to create this. And uh, I want to thank you again for being such a wonderful guest. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. 
Thank you so much, Gail. Take care.